All right. So at the start of this, mm. uh, I just want to inform you and the audience that there is a surprise waiting for you. There's a surprise waiting for me. Yes. Once we get to the meat of the show. The meat, whatever that might be. Whatever, whatever that the, might be. The arbitrary meat of the show. You have a surprise for I me. I do have a surprise for you. When in I, the refrigerator. Yeah, I, when I walked in, I was told, whatever you do, do not open the refrigerator. Yes. Uh, and it really made me want to open the refrigerator, but here we are. So at a given time, when I feel like the opening has arrived, has arrived mm -hmm. you know, when we're done pulling each other's legs or whatever it is we get up to, crazy kids, um, at that point, we, can I can I make a guess? Can I make some guesses? Sure. All right. Um, some O'Doul's non-alcoholic beer, potentially. Uh, my lost severed thumb, so that it is being preserved. You found it. You're preserving it so that it may be reattached at the yeah. ER later. The genetic artist did a masterwork on mm. your replacement. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. looks. Very real. It looks very real, but yeah. it's not the real thing. It's not the real thing. You yeah. can always tell. Yep. It's prosthetic. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm excited to get an actual, my, my, my organic thumb back. Yeah. Uh, Which for some reason has not been desiccated yet. No, no, because you've been vigilant and you've stored it in the fridge. Yep. I've been keeping it moist. That is my assumption. Yep. Um, thirdly, thirdly, uh, there is an entire surprise party for my birthday hidden in that fridge. Yeah. Two yep. tickets. To Six Flags. Oh, yes. <laughs> All you need is two tickets for Six Flags and a whole day <laughs> of fun. Oh, uh, well, is, well, that's kind of tough when you get a, a gift like that. That's like two tickets to something because the expectation is always like that you're bringing the person that gave you the tickets with you. <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry, Shad, you would not be my pick. For oh, okay. Six Flags Who are you going to Six date? Flags with then? Uh, I'm going to go with my wife, I think. Uh, that. You or... think Abby would have a good time at Six Flags? Well, probably not, but it would be the expectation, and so I would do it, right? Or at least I would. Be, she's say, the first so you're invited. saying the expectation would be yeah. that if I purchased you a pair of tickets to Six Flags, mm -hmm. and you went to your wife and you said, "Wife, my brother purchased me two tickets to Six Flags." Yes, and I I know what you're going to say next. Yes, I will take you. Mm -hmm. Not. She isn't going to say, oh, but aren't you going to go with Chad? Is that not even listen, a thought listen. process? The expectation of my wife that I would shirk you to bring her to Six Flags is stronger to me and more important to me than your expectation that I would be bringing you to Six Flags. Right. Okay. It's a hierarchy here. Well, I don't right. care. Six Flags is overhyped. I don't even understand what the deal is with wooden roller coasters. And why, isn't did, there like and why did you buy me two tickets to the place? Isn't there a thing with wooden roller coasters? Like that they're... Like, can they go faster or something along those lines? Well, I mean, they're more aesthetic. Maybe they make more, more creaky noises. More clunk, 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 yeah, yeah. clunk as you're going up the top there's of There's more it. clunking going on. Yeah, What's so a much more clunkier material? Whatever quotient, you math heads and science heads, science heads out there, whatever yeah. quotient stems. Yes. You stem heads out there. Those are stemming right now. <laughs> those that are stemming at the moment. Uh, whatever quotient is for the... Propensity for a material to go clack, 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 clack when you put a roller coaster over it. Yeah. Right. I would say my prediction is that that quotient is higher in wood than it is in, you know, steel and plastic. Well, I feel like steel and plastic would go clonk, 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 clonk. True. True. You it's all, it's two very different sounds. Do you think, so we're going to blow this wide open, dude. Do you okay. think that they are artificially adding the clunk, clunk, clunk sound now? Like back in the day, it was because of the industrial way. lubricants have gotten too powerful. Oh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> obviously, like they could they I'm could design sure that that's out from, if they wanted to. I'm, I'm sure that's pretty sure that's from chain link going over spokage. First off, first off, maybe, yeah. But second, they could have figured out how to stop that, but they haven't, right? I mean, but I guess there isn't really people hollering for them to you know stop the clunk clunk clunk. I was I was reading the other day about people whose whole thing is roller coaster completionism. Mm. It's like geocaching, yeah. sort of, where you track all of your roller coasters uh, that you've ever ridden on, how many times you've ridden on them, et cetera. And there's a leaderboard mm. on the internet, which is being maintained by a, I'm sure, a very pleasant group of moderators. Yes. Uh, <laughs> who, 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 every day. Hey, that's, that's slander, dude. You yeah. have no idea. Yeah. So you self-report, and I think that you, I don't know if you have to provide any sort of proof, but you self-report the the roller coasters you've been on and you require points basically and you know you can see oh this guy's gone to as 
the most roller coasters in the U.S., the yeah. most in Britain, blah, 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 the most ever. The really thing is, the funny thing is the power users who plan their entire vacations yes. around going on the most roller coasters, which, you know, I've recently, and I don't know, maybe we'll talk about this on the Patreon because this is something we're definitely not going to talk about on the show, but I've recently <laughs> ensconced myself in a very obscure community's mm-hmm. uh, forum. And maybe one day, honestly, the more I get into this forum, I'm like, we got to have one of these guys on the show. <laughs> Uh, so we might have one of these guys on the show. So awesome, you man. another low charting episode featuring someone who we really are hyped to have on the show. <laughs> Shout out to Zach. I hope I hope that you're doing well. Yeah. Had a good holiday season. We're friends on Facebook, so I keep up with him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, it, I'm starting to get the like feeling of I do kind of want to impress these. Tw- 75 guys <laughs> you know what i mean i kind of want to impress as, them. as the outsider uh, yeah the new blood i'm the, like i want to post you know i want to start a thread i want to see what's going on mm-hmm. right and i can see how you could easily because then you get you know they they start t- paying attention to you people are having conversations with you on this on this small community and then yeah. you become a power user you're getting words of affirmation you're getting words of affirmation yeah. and so i'm imagining potentially um, <laughs> that Somebody might, you know, go onto this roller coaster fandom thing, upload a couple of their roller coasters, get some upvotes or whatever, and then mm-hmm. start being like, you know, uh, you know, well, I'm in here. Maybe, that's, maybe I'm, I'm going to become a roller coaster guy. Yeah. Maybe that's going to be my. And as my I was thing. saying before that digression, there's guys who go on vacation and they'll go. The people who are the real winners mm-hmm. are the ones who are like, I'm going to India, and I'm going to every crock pot, two pennies to get in. Yeah amusement center in rural India that I can find and riding like the what could almost barely be called a roller coaster, coaster yeah. right? Like maybe it's motorized, right? It's shaped like a goat and it yeah. goes, you know, over two hills. And kitty roller coasters count. Nice. There's a compilation of photos in the Wall Street Journal article I read because I read the A-head basically every day uh, of people on various caterpillars and mm. and and is there mushrooms are there height restrictions on that like you can't be a certain height yeah but the, the whole point is that you try to con your way onto it mm. because more often than not they'll let you go on if you have a kid with you mm. okay. and so <laughs> there you go there's two things that are crazy about this one you know you have a parent who's a roller coaster head and they yeah. take you on all these roller coasters mm-hmm. the other one is you like pay someone to, to, to be give you kid. their kid. Yeah, yeah. Or you pay a kid to be like, hey, kid, let me like just ride on these four roller coasters. Pretend to be my child. Trust me, nothing weird at all. <laughs> and while we're all the way at the top of that hill, I promise I'll, I'll keep my hands to myself or whatever. Right. But yeah, you, you pay a kid 20 bucks to ride the little worm so you yeah, get more yeah. points on the online game. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So. Well, yeah, so the real winners are the guys who have the most in India and and rural Romania mm. and just all these different places because they're like, I'm going to high concentrations. Doesn't matter the quality, mm. you know. And there's like people who, I think one of the big things is riding every wooden roller coaster mm. in the world because they're fairly rare. Mm. Um, so, do you yeah. get some sort of like flair on your account? That I'm sure there's notes. a badge. Yeah, I'm sure you get invited to a specific Discord <sighs> where you sure. bowed mouth all of the other discords, <laughs> all the other. Plethora of roller coaster discords. Yes, yes. yes. All yes. of those moderators, of course, incredibly class act people. Yeah. Yep. Never, yeah. never uh, abusing their power on Discord for any nefarious purposes ever. No, no. doesn't happen. No. No. no, no. And that, and that, you would suggest it, listener, is <laughs> more of a sign of your lack of moral character than theirs. I, I love the idea of being a tyrant of the roller coaster discord mm-hmm. i love the idea of being a tyrant of of any sort of discord or forum period uh i, I feel like I'm on, I'm on a couple of i'm on a couple of facebook groups that are fairly active i don't post i'm i'm, I'm a chronic lurker mm-hmm. i'm trying to change that about myself yeah you're a good christian man i'm a good christian man mm-hmm. i don't, don't get, get i don't involved. get in the fights and no. whatnot but the the levels to which somebody can get petty and angry about the smallest things in the whole damn world mm-hmm. is insane. One of my favorite things right now, and this is across every Facebook group, this is across every hobby of which I'm a participant. If you post an AI generated image, oh, you are. It's you. 
it's chaos. I'm not saying this is a guy who's like, I posted a ge- AI generated image and I got unfairly flamed. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is an outside observer yeah. watching people post AI images. It's the partisans from all sides of the issue come out and just beat the crap out of each other in the comments. You know, it'll be like, hey, what do you guys think of this? And it's like, get the hell off my forum, yeah. get off of Facebook, I hate your guts. You know, it, it's it's pretty out of control. Well, I mean, that's the, usually my reaction to, you know, seeing something that I dislike, period, yeah. online. Is it's crush like, and kill it. Yeah, yeah, crush the individual, actually. Not just yes. it, but yes. the individual who posted it, uh, you know, who may or may not have good intentions. I like the idea of teaching one of those high school slash middle school like online etiquette courses that they're making kids take nowadays <laughs> yeah, where yeah. it's like you do you see something that you disagree with <laughs> you know uh attack them personally the mm-hmm. more that you mention their mother the more effective your attack will be <laughs> do you see something that seems suspect and it's a validity share that <laughs> please <laughs> like it <laughs> increase its bandwidth <laughs> spread in misinformation Ah, man, I, I'd love to sit in on one of those classes. Uh, just, you know, because who knows? There might be something you could learn out of something like that, right? That's true. Yeah. Dylan, yeah. You, you, you sit there and you're like, the onions fake? fake? What? what? I really, you know, I really thought that it was pigs were in fact flying when Donald Trump was elected. I thought that that, Is that was, was that one of the, it could have been, I don't know. That was a, <laughs> that was a dumb joke. <sighs> Much like the onion makes nowadays, actually. Mm. That was pretty accurate. Mm. They're not, they're not the best. They're not what they once was, yeah, including, uh, you know, who's really not once they what what they once was is the Babylon Bee. What yes, a, that fell off really hard. What a downturn that hit. Yes, they yeah. became culture warriors rather than comedians. Yeah, It's a dangerous, dangerous place yeah. to be Which, in, Which, you know, is something that we've courted many times on this podcast. Yeah, we thought yeah. talking about whether or not the new Little Mermaid movie is woke would be a really good way to yeah. <laughs> improve our brand. Exactly, yeah. I think that, you know, us saying, well, you know, the mermaids are white and have always yeah, been, been white, white yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I, and, I, and really taking a stand in Taking a stand on yeah. that, we can have a URL where we're like throwing up or something mm-hmm. or we or we have racist caricature versions of everybody in the, in the Little Mermaid. I The funny thing about people who do that, though, is mm-hmm. that they... Usually, they blow up pretty effectively. The algorithm is built around this. Well, it's it's about outrage, right? It's built around outrage. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and interactions, good and bad, you know, lead to you no know, more traffic. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw this this comedian on YouTube. He made a video about that, where you like when one of your favorite small YouTubers blows up, or I think is, is what it was called, or something. But it's like a guy who's like, and today on historical battleships, you know, like <laughs> he's just going through it. It's like, and by the way, it is, it's the whole, he like looks down at his title of video is like wokeness in the Navy or whatever. <laughs> and it's got like millions and millions of views. And it's like, all right, well, this is what this guy is going to do for the rest of their career. The yeah. funny thing is you see, you see, it you happen. see that happen and you yeah. see it like you, there's all sorts of channels that I, I'm mentally thinking of right now that where this happens and this happens like sort of on any sort of part of the ideological spectrum too, mm-hmm. you know, cause you're just trying to create issues, mm-hmm. trying to create anger. More people are going to comment. The algorithm is super strong at pushing that. This is all stuff that millions of people have said yeah. before us. So maybe I should hop on that roller coaster forum and say, I think wooden roller coasters are gay mm-hmm. and see what happens. Yeah. And, and not even to know whether or not that's positive or negative. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just that they are a homosexual uh, thing. They are homosexual. Yeah. Wooden roller coasters are gay coded mm-hmm. and leave it at that. I refuse to explain. <laughs> refuse to elaborate. I refuse to elaborate. Stand refuse back. to explain. And just watch it Stand watch back. it, you know, unfold. Yes. Yes. Do and think, for do you think you'd be kicked from that forum if that was like your first post? Oh, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. <laughs> I would have to you'd have to ingratiate yourself. Yeah, you'd have yeah. to you have to like a bunch of, you have to comment on a bunch of people's photos. You have to learn how to use HTML like all these damn forums make you yeah. do. And then you, know? you got to actually actively like take a couple of pictures at roller coasters, yes. submit them. Yes, yes. And then you yeah. say, hey, by the way, I've been thinking about this. <laughs> roller coasters gay? Yeah, yeah. Artificial intelligence and roller coasters? Question <laughs> mark? I was using chat GBT the other day and I said, uh, design me a roller coaster. And what came out was honestly better than any roller coaster, coaster I've, I've ever seen. seen. I, uh, you know, <laughs> Today I was like, I want to inter- I wanted to generate an AI image today. Mm-hmm. Uh, what lo- what uh, imp of the perverse. forgive me, Father, yeah. for I have sinned. <laughs> I attempted you. to generate an and an, 
It, it doesn't matter. I just did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which makes me sound really guilty. Yeah. <laughs> right now you sound yeah. like, what was the image? Shad? Can you turn your mic a little bit towards you a little more? It's a uh, hello. Right up. There it is. Uh, so the image doesn't matter, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I was attempting to Shad, generate an image. You, you are making this a lot worse on yourself. It was a sports team logo. Okay. I was attempting to generate a sports team logo. And Bing, I don't know if you've noticed, for a long time just had Dolly built into it. Yeah. Where you just asked Bing's AI and it would generate you the image. Um, Dolly just got put behind a paywall. Mm. You used to be able to use the old version of Dolly, Dolly 2. And now Dolly 3 is, I think maybe they just, you always had to, you had to pay for open AI to use Dolly 3. I think now they're just like, that's just going to be the standard from now on yeah. or something. And now it, Bing doesn't even have access to it anymore. And so I'm sure the amount of AI generated content is just going to run everybody's yeah, feeds is really going to go down because now it's all going to be behind a paywall, which, you know, some people are into paying for that. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that guy we know still has that account. <laughs> Ask a favor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can, can you paint me a frog? Can you, can you s generate an image of a roller coaster that is gay coded? Yes. A gay coded mm -hmm. roller coaster. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be pretty easy actually. Just color the spokes that are going up. Mm. <sighs> You know, that's probably over a curve. Mm. So that it would look kind of like a... Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so it's time for your surprise. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Dylan, okay. will you kindly... I'm not going to... I'm. You're not going to get up and go grab it? Uh, I think, it, it, depending <laughs> on how this turned out, I think it's important that you're the one who does it. So okay, okay. Uh, Dylan's going to go up. All right. He's going to get up. For those watching, you know, you can see his his fine bod a little closer for a second. And he's going to walk to the refrigerator. And I need you to grab both of the things in there because one of them is for me. Is it a mess? Okay, not a mess. It's good. Okay. So those for those of you who are listening... And not watching. Uh, we have some from a nondescript location. Yeah, we would never. Iced cream cones. And I know that you're kind of not doing as much sugar right now, but. What, Shad, I only have one real question. First off, mm -hmm. why would you think that this is good content for people to watch us eat an ice cream cone? Mm. Well, imagine for a second mm -hmm. you have gone to that fridge expecting a sweet treat or ice cold or duels or. Tickets to Six Flags. Right. And there was neither of those things. There was nothing. You open up the fridge and it said, eh, eh. sorry, fridge broke. <laughs> I read an article today. A couple of articles, actually, about the ice cream machines at McDonald's. Ah. And I thought we'd have a brief conversation about them. Wow. So this is kind of ice cream. Yeah, this is kind of old hack, which I was, I was aware of this story, sort of. And I was tricked by the algorithm today because we're giving this away for free right we're now. We're giving this way. away for free. We're giving away the image of us looking ice cream cones <laughs> yeah. for free. Mm. When you have a beard. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> we are. We look like freaking milk commercials right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. This is, uh, <laughs> this, this is not our I, most I, flattering I, episode. Yeah, I hope this is uh, working it for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got this. I, my. Uh, at work, my home screen on Mosul Firefox uses this app called Pocket, which is a thing that like takes stories and puts them all in one place. And I was under the impression that all the stories were recent and up to date. Mm -hmm. and this is from like 2021. <laughs> I read this whole like think piece article and it kept mentioning dates that were forever ago. And I was like, weird. Yeah. What? What's going on? And then, of course, it was like this was article was from 2021. Luckily, there's been an update in the story last month, mm. December 14th. So this is relatively new. Other people have covered this. I just didn't know. So I thought that there's a good chance you haven't heard this story yet. Oh. Many people have been in the position Dylan was in. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, it was a rough one. Yeah. Well, they've attempted to acquire a sweet icid cone. And part of me actually thought, It'd be funny if I just put like a piece of paper with a middle finger on it and told him that there was ice cream in there. Um, that would be funny. 
But we didn't have a camera in there, and also I wanted some ice cream. So we're eating ice cream. Anyway, many people have been in this position. This is so messy. <laughs> This Dude, falling I apart, man. I, I, I don't think you even thought man, this through. I did through. not yeah. think this through. <laughs> um, and they've gone to the McDonald's and attempted to acquire an ice cream cone, a shake, something along those lines. And the machine broke. Ice cream machine broke. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> it's okay. LeBron James. Um, or is it Michael Jordan? Yeah, it's LeBron James. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Have a nice day. Now, this is a big meme. It was a much bigger meme back in like the 2020s. Which we're not in anymore. Yeah, which we're not yeah. in anymore. <laughs> Since we're now well in 2024. Past them. Yeah. yeah, we're in basically 2030 at this point. Um, big meme. And I honestly have never been to a McDonald's once in my life and it's been broke. It seems, Same. It, it, from what I've read, it seems like this is a much bigger problem in cities where the turnover is much higher on McDonald's employees. Mm. And I'll get into you to like why this is the case and the issues surrounding it. But uh, at any given moment, seven to like fifteen percent of McDonald's ice cream machines in America are broken. That does not seem like a lot. It does not, but it seems fairly high for what is ostensibly one of the most well-developed machineries of fast food delivery, mm. actually the best developed machinery of fast food delivery and automation in the world, mm-hmm. right? McDonald's is the most powerful global supply chain, basically, there is. Uh, one of my favorite anecdotes about the McDonald's supply chain is that they have a special relationship with Coca-Cola to where they have special refrigerated Coke trucks that deliver the Coke products and syrup to McDonald's to make sure that it has the tastiest possible. <laughs> now we get to the cone, Dylan is crunching. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> That's just for you. <laughs> That's just for you. Uh, <laughs> if anybody's going to be freaked out by that, they've already left at this point. Do oh. you guys like this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have, to, like, I have to keep eating it or else it's going to melt in my hand. <laughs> okay. Anyway. The reason why this is a problem is because they use a very specific ice cream machine, which let me double check on. It's like all over my hands. Um, <laughs> uh, See, you thought that I would be the one that would be the butt of this joke. But <laughs> yeah, but I have to <laughs> hold, Chad is trying to. I have to hold this piece of paper. I have to like <laughs> <laughs> you know, ice cream coat. You are you are podcasting extreme right now, dude. <laughs> This is podcasting with two hands tied around your back right now. <laughs> this guy, we got to, we got to. You're submit trying these. to eat around the yeah. bike while you're with the loose paper in one hand. We got to submit these to the Webbies, you know. <laughs> I want a Webby for this. Um, okay, so they're called the ta- Taylor ice cream machines. Um, and Taylor is this food accoutrement production company that produces stuff like. They also do like the McDonald's ovens and the McDonald's griddles and all these different things. Now, the cool thing about the Taylor and the device that they use is the Taylor C602 digital ice cream machine is that it has a very specific drum. Because if you've ever seen a soft serve machine before, basically how they work, I worked at Dairy Queen and we didn't have these. These are a little too high tech for what we were up to. Um, They basically take liquid slime just like dairy slime sugary dairy slime and it gets sucked into a tumbler sort of like a slushy machine and it gets tumbled and the edge of the tumble is given these ice crystals and then that's made into the the soft delicious soft serve that you Mm -hmm. eat put in your shakes and your blizzards and your mcflurries and etc all of them Um, the same ice cream yeah detritus and so they use advanced digital technology to do it at a higher rate and at a higher quality. Mm. So uh, a statistic... You know what I've said? Yeah. I've said that the ice cream cone at McDonald's has just increased in quality every day. <laughs> yes. Really, <laughs> since they, I first started eating them. So They really feel so much tastier. The, the primary source material for this is uh, Andy Greenberg in Wired, where this article back in 2021, April of 2021. Um, and he, <laughs> he, he mentions this franchise owner who says, yeah, they can make like 10 cones in a minute. 
<laughs> which as somebody who has worked with soft serve before is insane. And the, now the fact that the quality isn't reduced. The trade-off is that it's like a, like a Ferrari, mm -hmm. like an Italian car. Every component has to be exactly where it should be. Everything has to be tight. There's all sorts of different sizes of washers, rubber seals, springs, mechanisms that all have to be properly greased, put in their location for it all to work perfectly. And one of the mechanisms that's cool about it is that it like continuously thaws and freezes the contents of the machine overnight mm. so that you don't have to store the mm. all the stuff the mucus and liquid in, yeah <laughs> so do it that, all again yeah. yeah and do it all again and reclean it because it say it goes bad in the machine overnight yeah which is, was something that we had to worry about with um with, with dairy queen um but imagine taking the most beautiful car you've ever seen mm -hmm. and having um <laughs> a 14 year old <laughs> homeschooler who is either going to get kicked out of his house or work for the summer mm -hmm. whose turnover rate is measured in days, yeah. not weeks, run that thing and clean it. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to break, yeah, yeah. right? It's going to break all of the time. And they have a specific relationship with Taylor and Taylor has a specific relationship with uh, like different repair companies you have to have a you have to go through their technicians, yes. mm -hmm. right? So franchise owners have to go specifically through their technicians, and part of the reason why they claim they can get around with this is because it's digital. Mm. Now, imagine you like think there's an issue with it, or there's a problem, and you want to get a diagnostic on something like temperature. You can't. Mm -hmm. There's a screen in there and all that stuff. You can't get to the temperature, and nowhere in the manual. Does it tell you how to and how it. to do that? Yeah. Right? You can't get any of the data. But if you click a very specific order mm -hmm. of a code menus, you know, if you click, you know, this and then this and then exit out of this and then go back into it and exit blah, 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 blah then you get a diagnostic menu, mm -hmm. right? An admin menu. And so to learn any of this information, you have to pay for a technician to come out. Mm -hmm. Only person that knows the code. Only person who knows the code. So, it creates a problem, right? Because you can lose thousands of dollars if the machine goes down at an inopportune time. Yeah. This like, like, say, a lunch rush on, yes. a, on a Saturday. The, the, the article quotes this synonymous... Anonymous? Synonymous. Mm. Pseudonymous, as in a, under a pseudonym. Mm. A pseudonymous uh, Twitter account that... It's like a truther, McDonald's <laughs> franchise owner who's like constantly sticking it to the man. Yeah, yeah. Who's like, shamrock season is a big effing deal. <laughs> it and, is. And if your machine goes down during shamrock season, which apparently in which they said sell 10 times as much ice cream, mm, right? During that period. Then you can lose thousands of dollars over the course of a few hours, mm -hmm. right? So it's important that you know whether or not your machine is up. But you don't know. And the people who have to report to you are your McDonald's managers. Yeah. <laughs> or your pimply teenage losers, mm -hmm. right? Or 25-year-old losers, right? Who, uh, <laughs> you know, are more concerned about, you know, if that Indica is going to hit, hit right <laughs> on their shift um, than they are about your ice cream machine. So, enter these two young folks. O'Sullivan and Nelson. <clears throat> I, I'm trying to find their... Let me see if I can find their first name. I didn't uh, highlight the contents of this. This young man and woman, who are older than I am by a large margin, but uh, who went... Like, worked briefly with a Taylor machine. Mm -hmm. Jeremy O'Sullivan is the O'Sullivan's name. I don't know if I can find, find Nelson's later, but... Jeremy O'Sullivan's kind of the primary guy. He's the guy who's quoted in all these articles. And then his partner, his long-term partner, uh, she is the co-owner of this company. Mm -hmm. And they're working with Taylor ice cream machines because they invent a Froyo machine that works by itself. Mm. And what they use at the base of it is one of these Taylor machines. And uh, their, their company falls apart because they can't figure out an effective way to maintain them. Mm. And they get like a deal with the stadium where the 49ers play and you know, all this stuff. 
and they're making money hand over fist, but the thing's breaking all the time. And there's there's this anecdote where they put like a nest camera inside of it mm-hmm. to see it break or whatever. And then it like filled up with ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it filled up with uh froyo, and then they saw a for the one of the employees at the stadium open the door, ice cream spills out. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like puts the piece that was missing that was causing the flooding to happen because they for, he forgot that step during the cleanup process yeah. put it in close it just to walk out <laughs> which is awesome that guy is i the respect best. that guy yeah 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 we've all been there we've all been yeah there. so um they're like ah screw this <clears throat> we got to figure out a way to track this remotely so they develop with a Raspberry Pi, which is like this small device that you can use for like basic network hacking. Mm-hmm. Um, they a remote diagnostic tool? Yes. Mm-hmm. They develop a remote diagnostic tool, which they use, they get like all this, they, they work with this tech startup to get it to work in their machines and they use, they hack the Taylor's proprietary technology. technology. Yeah. And Taylor works in Congress with them because they want this Froyo thing to work out. So they're like, yeah, sure, we'll give you the machines if you want to work on them, etc. So they do that for a long time. And they start to realize, man, this is a terrible deal. These things break all the time. Maybe they just suck. We're about halfway to a product. Mm-hmm. Let's just double down on the diagnostic tool. So they developed this thing called Kitch. Which is a remote diagnostic tool, which allows them, it's K-Y-T-C-H, which allows them to remotely diagno- do remote diagnostics mm-hmm. on- Taylor machines. On Taylor machines. And you can imagine what happens next. Mm-hmm. They sell it to franchises, and franchises start installing it and all these things. And over the course of several years, they go from like Burger Kings and all this stuff, you know- The minor leagues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the major leagues, and they start putting it in. McDonald's machines and they get all this high profile, you know, coverage in the franchise community. And there's this story where they go to a big franchising conference and one of the heads of the franchising conference is giving a speech from the stage and is like, I want to give a shout out to, to these, these guys. guys. Yeah. And they see huge numbers and all this stuff. What's important though is their business practices because this is going to come up later. Mm. How it would work is they would offer you a free trial for like six months and you get the thing. And then after, or six weeks, I think. And then mm-hmm. after that, you have to pay like 10 bucks a month or a week or whatever. Okay. That's not bad. And then... That, that kind of overhead. Like three months later, they doubled it. Mm. And then another three months later, they doubled it again. You know, they were they were getting a little greedy, mm-hmm. a little aggressive with the pricing. Mm-hmm. So shortly after they're endorsed by this guy, McDonald's sends out an email. <laughs> And they're like, by the way, if you have put in some sort of diagnostic tool, now this is saving people thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. Not only for like, because apparently they didn't really prevent problems, Mm -hmm. but the amount that you're saving from deferred maintenance, Mm -hmm. the amount that you're saving by knowing when something like this happens so that you can alert your franchise or all these, you know, like this, this anecdote after anecdote of franchise owners being like, I would wake up in the morning at 530. I'm going to start my day because I'm on my grind set. Yeah. Uh, my McDonald's grind set. My McDonald's my grind, Mick grind set. <laughs> my McGrind set. It's like a McGriddle. Uh, but my McGrind set, you know, right before he goes and does his morning jog, they would check their phone and they'd see, oh, my ice cream's working. Mm-hmm. Nice. And if it isn't working, they'd be able to see, okay, do I need to call a technician or et cetera. And so it's very popular, hugely popular. When McDonald's sends out this email where it's like, look, if you have one of these machines, like they don't threaten any sort of action. Action. Yeah. They're like, if you have one of these machines, just know A, it voids your warranty, which is a classic mm-hmm. anti self repair jargon. Yeah. Right. And I, this is going to get into a conversation I kind of want to have later about data and what exactly valuable data is mm-hmm. or et cetera. But they're like, okay, you're voiding your warranty. Also, there's proprietary data, right? Mm-hmm. So they can, you know, they're, they're figuring out how much ice cream we sell, which I don't think you can learn that way. Well, you could, yeah, you could, based off of what 
if it's as digital as yeah. you might med, as you say, like yeah. it, it would track the amount of Gallons. volume that is exiting yeah. the machine and sell that to Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> like, we now know how much ice cream McDonald's sells. It's more than us. Um, the, this freaking corporate spy. Yeah. Being like, I've yeah. got bad news, everybody. <laughs> I know that we've thought we've been on top for the last 20 years, yes. but not the case. Sad not to report. Case. Um, but the, the my favorite one is that if they insinuate it could kill somebody or hurt somebody severely, mm. this could result in, in human mm. harm. Mm. massive bodily harm. <laughs> and everybody's like, what? <laughs> because the directions say you're supposed to unplug the machine before you fix it. And so yeah. everybody's like, okay, what? So like, if you open it and then the wires the are crossed yeah, or et cetera, yeah. like what? You put your, you take a screwdriver and you stab it directly. It's going to electrocute you. Probably not by much, you know? Mm. So they do this claim and like literally overnight, their sales start drying. And then the next day, McDonald's sends out, are, I mean, is it Kitch's sales start drying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it might be the next day or it's the day after. Or like the, maybe the, within the next week. McDonald's is like, by the way, just reiterating, you're not allowed to have these. Also, Kitsch, or also Taylor, wants to announce a new product. The remote ice cream network extravaganza. And so something I've kind of neglected to mention is that leading up to this, they had been starting to get like customer requests to home addresses being like, we'd like to purchase a kitsch. And they're like, well, that's not a franchise. It's a home address. Why do you want this? Yeah, and they're yeah. like, peace. Yeah, you know, yeah. or they'd be like, we'd like to purchase a kitsch. And it's like, oh, it says here on your LinkedIn that you work for this, <laughs> you know, corporate espionage <laughs> <laughs> private <laughs> investigation service. And like, you know. And so... They were under the impression, and so here's here's kind of where we're, this catches us up, because not much has changed actually, yeah. and I do have a slight update, but not much has changed. Kitsch insinuates that they acquired one somehow, and that as a part of their agreement with the franchisees, mm -hmm. they could not legally share their device. With their employer or with other or not with the with the fran the owner like the the yeah. because it's not technically their employer yeah but, or any other person mm -hmm. right for some reason they were under the impression that this would like be bulletproof yeah, yeah I don't know why but they were like you can't share this with anybody this is our technology it's sort of like you're renting it yeah right and uh, they think that that guy who gave the big speech at the franchise thing because he purchased it for 10 of his franchises mm -hmm. and then one of his machines went into repairs for like six months mm -hmm. and they were they think that while it was at these repairs because they kept getting pings from its ip address or whatever because there would yep. be like logins from mm -hmm. different ip addresses at all these places where taylor factories were and they were under the impression that that's you know you know this is all speculation mm -hmm. this is all alleged yeah all here right and so now kitsch is suing taylor and McDonald's, and McDonald's is, you know, uh, because corporate owner. I, you, I, you neglected to mention this, but Taylor was the one that came out with a new product. That's the mm -hmm. new ice cream diagnostic mm -hmm. product. Okay, okay. So they're under the impression that Taylor is, you know, took the technology, kicked them out of the marketplace, yeah, and then replaced them. And when that happened, like literally overnight, they drove, they dried up. They lost all their. They money. lost all their money. Yeah, you know. And they're suing McDonald's for like almost a billion dollars. Yeah. You know, I have no idea what their company was valued at. They were making good money from what I can see, but almost a billion dollars for McDonald's. I don't know what the lawsuit is for for Taylor. Um, but the like only thing that they've so this was like in 2021 is mm -hmm. when this and they've been super public about it. They've been on podcasts. Yeah. They've there was a story in the New York Times. There was this big story in Wired all over the place. These two people are going around as being like, McDonald's screwed us over royally, mm -hmm. right? Well, what the Wired article fails to mention, that this Wired article, also written uh, by Andy, mentions, which came out in December 14, 2023, that that same synonymous, he talked to that same synonymous uh, Twitter user, mm -hmm. which I think was called like, I can, I can like McDonald's Truth originally. <laughs> yeah. 
has since changed names. Um, he mentioned that everybody was like starting to get sick of them, mm. basically, because the prices were going up so high. Yeah. And that the second there was an out, they took it. They took it. Yeah. Um, but so in the marketplace, right, from a purely capitalistic standpoint, right, they they overextended their monopoly, their advantage, and then when an, a, co- a competition came up, they weren't prepared to. Yeah, but to uh, it. the big thing is that they're claiming is corporate espionage. Cor- yeah. corporate, not corporate. I don't even know what that is. Corporate espionage. So they're claim- specifically to McDonald's is that they made efforts to drive Kitsch out of the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Is the nature of it, and. Uh, I, I'm, let me see if I can find the exact wording because it's in the second article. But they've gone to the press, their legal team has, mm-hmm. in the last month because they claim to have found an email that is the smoking gun. Mm. Uh, I'll tell you right now, probably not. Um, so here's the here's the paragraph. So I'm reading directly from Mr. Greenberg. Here. Mm-hmm. Um, on Wednesday... Kitch filed a newly unredacted motion for summary adjudication in its lawsuit against Taylor for alleged trade libel, traitorous interference in other claims. <laughs> They're being traitorous. The new motion, which replaces a redacted version from August, refers to internal emails Taylor released in the discovery phase of the lawsuit, which were quietly unsealed over the summer. Mm. Quietly. The motion focuses in particular on one email from Timothy Fitzgerald, the CEO of Taylor Parent Company, Middlebury, or excuse me, Middleby. That appears to suggest that either Middleby or McDonald's sent a communication to McDonald's franchise owners to dissuade them from using the Kitsch device. Mm. Here's the quote. Which we already know. Yes. We basically know that that's sort of what happened, but here's the quote. Not sure if there is anything we can do to slow up the franchise community on the other solution, Fitzgerald wrote in October 17th, 2020. Not sure what communication from either McD or Mid can or will go out. That's it. They're claiming that the other solution means their product. Mm -hmm. Which, and this is supposed to be for the rollout of their device. So what's important about this, and I didn't mention this, is their timeline claims that their device was in production long before Kitsch became a product. Mm. And that Kitsch entering the sphere, right, was more like they got to, it was parallel thinking they got to it first and they were like well we have the product already yeah right you should use this thing what they're they're insinuating that that claims that they went out of their way to get kicked kicked out mm-hmm. because they were worried about its threat to the marketplace and then use their proprietary technology uh to produce their own solution well i mean regardless <laughs> Little uh, little, uh, little loud. ice cream cone yeah. ASMR here. You got to be a little bit farther away from the mic, my yeah. brother. Um, I feel like I should say something controversial so that you'll like talk for the next five minutes so I can finish this game. <laughs> uh, I, can, <laughs> I can hear it from here. <laughs> you got to really push that thing away, brother. I mean, let's. I mean, who knows? The problem is we don't have a live audience to tell us whether or not they're into it right now. That's the issue. Yeah. Um, Anyway, from what you're saying, and I know absolutely nothing about this outside of our now current conversation, Mm -hmm. it sounds like the only thing that McDonald's actually did that is illegal, or that Taylor did that was illegal, is uh, the proprietary technology and um, copying it, right? Uh, And, you know using their patent or whatever and, and, you know, altering their tech. Um, because it's now mucus, it is, it is, it has achieved the mucus phase. Yeah. Um, because on, on its face, it seems like, all right, so they, they had a product, they had a, 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 a method for distribution. They had a method for, um, monetization. They had all this different stuff. And another company came in with a similar product and used their power, right, to sort of push them out of the marketplace. Right? Yeah, that's not like illegal. That there's not. A, it's not a crime to do. I, that. I think that specifically, it, there's two different cases. One's against Taylor Middleby, and one's against McDonald's. There might be three. There might be one against Taylor, one, one against, against Middleby, Middleby, and one against McDonald's. But uh, I think the McDonald's one explicitly 
is, as I read earlier, is about them being forced out of the marketplace. Because McDonald's was doing it not out of a sense of self-preservation, but as at a set as a, in like, because Taylor is not McDonald's. Yeah. And so they're under the impression that McDonald's, out of a perverse desire to kind of get in better with Taylor, axed them. And that was just direct. And I don't know. And that's not illegal, well, though. I don't know. Apparently, there must be some sort of legal standing, at least for it to be heard. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, in my understanding, so it's not that's not. it has not been picked up yet. Yeah. At least as a, at, the, at the time of the writing of that article, at the time of, you know, and by extension, maybe by the time of this recording, the McDonald's one has not been, like, heard. Mm -hmm. The other one is being heard. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mostly based off the corporate espionage element. Okay. Okay. Um, but Yeah, because... Being pushed out of the marketplace is such an arbitrary, it's ambiguous, right? Because yeah. there's just so many things that can be done in competition that leads to you being pushed out of the marketplace, right? Or even backhanded tactics, say if that you would call that backhanded tactics in order to do so. Again, there's no there's no law against it, yeah. right? You know, this that's equivalent to McDonald's was mean to us. Right and had favorites in regards to who they'd like to distribute to distribute their product with. Yeah. Right. Um, I, in my mind. Yeah. No. I, I think it's it's the strangest thing about the story to me is the data stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I know you. We talked about this already when you're saying like I don't know. It's important to know how much ice cream you sell. I, I didn't say it was important. Yeah. I just said, Dylan just being like a huge shill for that data. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, Listen, I bought a lot of stocks and that data in particular. The problem with it is that I I feel like. You know, people say nowadays that you don't own anything anymore, and it's just weird to me that you don't even own that ice cream machine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, for a company to put its propri proprietary data or its data acquisition stuff into a product because then they make you sign this predatory contract where you have to agree to be the source of this data, mm -hmm. right? But now you can't interact with your object anymore, the object that you're paid a bunch of money for because it's acquiring slash is a source of that data. It's wild to me. It's like, you know, your iPhone is a good example of this. It's the most famous example of this. Yeah. Um, they don't break all the time. <laughs> They're very reliable, but you can't go to a store and get it fixed. You can no. go to an Apple store. Um, you can sh send it in. There's a good chance they won't fix it. They very rarely do. Well, uh, and, and to clarify, there are places that will fix your iPhone. They will fix your but iPhone. But it will They'll avoid your warranty. Your, your warranty. Right? And why? No, well, because Apple isn't getting money off of it. Yeah. It's like the gaming industry tried this years ago when they tried to illegalize uh, secondhand games. <laughs> if you guys remember that. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> when it was uh, yeah, at the was start of the Xbox, last... Xbox, I think? Xbox yeah. One. Yeah. It was in uh, PlayStation, I think... I've heard rumors that they were planning on announcing something similar, but the backlash was so bad on the Xbox One that they didn't do it. But, yeah, um, yeah they wanted to get... They wanted to put RFID... Or, uh, um, what's it called? What's the... Not RFID... Um, the thing that GOG doesn't put on your games or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, DRM? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. A, a super aggressive DRMing software so that a product can only ever be downloaded once and then it would well, be useless. Well, and specifically on a disc, right? Yes. Like when you have a disc, it can be used on one particular device and not on other devices. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, it's a tale as old as time for software like that to have you know, built-in codes or et cetera to prevent you from pirating it so yeah. that you'd have to have a physical copy so you could have the code that was on the back of the box or, you know, et cetera. But the... Uh, <laughs> um, so there's, like, copy protection, and that's, like, all f good and fun, but <clears throat> when you say you can't have access to what makes the thing that you paid money for work or tick, I mean... And most of this is because of the introduction of software or digital. And I think so. Uh, another example the article points out is uh, tractors, mm -hmm. deer tractors. Uh, deer tractors have a similar fight that they're constantly in with farmers over being able to repair their own trucks. Mm -hmm. Because if the electronics get messed up, those things are also data oriented, they're Wi Fi enabled, they're talking with home base at all times. A lot of them can be driven remotely. Etc. Um, and because of that, something that in the heat of a moment might need to be fixed is totally unable to be fixed. And you know, this is something that we're starting to see with cars, with electric yeah. vehicles. Teslas have a lot of issues related to stuff like this, where if there's any sort of like internal issues with it comes to electronics, and sometimes 
updatings or downloads that there can be issues with driving your car. Um, so it's, it's, it's a weird thing that it's weird that these are all related, but the fact that your ice cream machine be broke is tangentially related. Now I have not seen a review one way or the other on this new Taylor version of Kitsch. Yeah, it's that is a piece of information that one I thing was I, I can tell on. you is that the amount of broken ice cream machines has not changed. The statistics are re, you know, the, they they bring up new statistics well, in the it, new if article. It's a diagnostic tool, though. Yeah, wouldn't that not change the amount of times it's broken, but just the chances of them being repaired within a timely which is manner? which is something that they mention in the second article. Somebody says, "Look, the thing about the Kitsch is that it doesn't really fix your thing, but yeah. it's nice to know and." Potentially, that's what this new software does. Mm-hmm. Um, now, they do seem like a couple of whiny people. <laughs> like, it's very whiny, the whole thing going on with the kitchen thing. And I can understand. It's yeah, their livelihood. Yeah, well, exactly. And that's, you know, like, that's all that they... And you thought that's that their big thing. You had thought you had hit, meal ticket. You hit the niche. Yeah. You were making super good money, and then you got screwed over. Mm-hmm. Look, if they're sturgeons... Don't swim in the pool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not going to go to bat against McDonald's. It's the evil empire. You know, this is Disney for food. You yeah. know, like you're going to you're gonna lose that fight any time of the week. And if you want to be a lamb free on that shark, we're going to expand this metaphor, <laughs> expand this metaphor in a totally improper way. But yeah. if you want to be the lamb free on that shark, then you got to be prepared for, for the other smoke. sharks. Yeah. Got to be prepared for that <laughs> for smoke. underwater smoke in this pool. With the sturgeon. And there's uh, always a bigger fish. Uh, uh, no, so uh, I actually just, this is really tangential, but yeah. uh, you reminded me of um, the whole Steamboat Willie thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had an argument with my wife, an intense one. Yeah. I was like, hey, did you know that Steamboat Willie is in the public, is domain. In the bu- public domain? And she says, no, that's impossible. <laughs> and I said, no, yeah, like you can... You can't use like the name Mickey Mouse, but you can use the likeness of the character of Steamboat Willie and you yeah. know and products and IP and stuff like that. And she's like, "No, Disney would never let that happen. Yeah, it's impossible. Like people will try, but there's no way it could it could actually happen." Um, and I, I that speaks to the fact that the perception of intellectual property, yeah, right, as a right of an organization for infinitum is so strong yeah right? the idea the possibility that mickey mouse or any form of mickey mouse and even by saying his name by invoking his name we we bring Iger upon ourselves mm. um you lord Iger, <laughs> could be manipulated you know it's 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 crazy to think about yeah i mean and, and you know the turnaround's been really fast and i'm interested to see how many of these new sort of Steamboat Willie horror games and movies, you know, and everything like that, how much of it will be litigated against off of minor detail, right? Where yeah, because like, you have Steamboat Willie, but it's the more newer versions of the mouse are not considered. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and that's public. the thing. It's like, well, what p- referential information in the movie is technically a Isn't part of like the Isn't there like a, like a guy who kind of looks like, I don't know, yeah, Bluto, or, or what's his name? I think it's... Uh, Oh, what's who's Blue? His villain, yeah, yeah he's the villain, villain guy. Yeah. I don't remember. Who his shows name. up in later stuff too sometimes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's but, in the in the Goofy movie. Yes. Yeah, he's in Steamboat Willie. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Um. So him too, I guess. So that his that particular iteration of him yeah. would be in there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I I I I think I with that public domain stuff. I've seen the reaction, as in the concept of reaction, not people reacting to, but yeah. the, like in reactiveness. Yeah. Um, like political ideology type reaction mm-hmm. uh, to public domain now is like oh, a bunch of crappy horror movies. And then people will come back like, look, it's just going to happen for a little while. And then we get public domain, which is always like, great. We have this like human, I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't get it. I, I'd have to have somebody really explain it to me. Like what value, because, because well, of the here's, internet, here's... the internet has already turned all of this stuff into everybody's stuff. It's yeah. just you can't make money on it. Yeah. It's like so, so what like what people aren't going to buy like people if they want to pay for your crappy fan art they'll hop on your Patreon. Like I, yeah. I don't understand what it is that's going to create more human flourishing by Steamboat Willie being able I, to I, I think the argument would be and this is out of my butt. So yeah. like, you know. And like nobody who invented Steamboat Willie is profiting off of Steamboat Willie anymore. Yeah. And so like because they're all dead. 
and that's fine. And well, and that's the point. Yeah. Right? Well, and, and in addition, right, the idea would be our cultural characters and signifiers yeah. should not be owned by a particular organization or individual, yeah. but should, in both money making and outside of money making, be free for all to to sure, take sure, advantage. Sure, sure, but I, right? I, you know, I. I'll believe it when I see it, I guess. Yeah. Like, you know, who 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 are some public domain figures who have been given that treatment and it's been good? Uh Sherlock Holmes. Um I, sure, yeah. Good. Uh kind of. Yeah. Uh I'm trying to think of other <laughs> Dracula. Dracula. The Bram Stoker is <laughs> I always do that. Uh, the ba- the Bram Stoker estate was very litigious, famously. Yeah. So, um, Dracula, the Frankenstein. Uh, I mean, most of it's like horror icons. I'm trying to think of like char- like Z- Ivanhoe. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Beowulf. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just I just there, don't there just, are some like, like Robin Hood. Like, Robin Hood's one. Um, King Arthur. No, yeah, King but, Arthur was like folk that's, tale. that's like legends and folk tales. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. And that's yeah. well, Robin Hood was like a, a major literary figure. Uh, yeah, I in guess particular. So. Yeah. yeah, like uh, Sinbad, uh, <laughs> Sinbad the comedian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of all the characters in that freaking um, Alice in Wonderland, famously. Oh yeah, because the Johnny Depp version was really. Something to behold. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, American uh, McGee's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I. Oh, I, there's a story I want to tell on oh, Patreon man. about American McGee. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's not for the public, but if you're interested, I do have some inside information about American McGee. Uh, oh wow! Well, so actually, this is probably a good time because we're running out of time to yeah, plug yeah. the Patreon. Yeah. We should have started the show by saying, make sure to like and subscribe to the Facebook account. Excuse me, to YouTube account. <laughs> we don't have a Facebook, Facebook account, account, dude. Uh, to the YouTube account, um, we've been actually getting some pretty good traction lately on some of our shorts. And if you're here because of some of those shorts and you're you know, enjoying the show, we'd love to have you. Like the episode if you can. Really helps us in the algorithm. I think that we're starting to ascend to another rung. Mm-hmm. And so you know, once we hit like 100, 150 subscribers, hopefully we can expect a little bit more uh, pressure. Mm-hmm. So that'd be really great if you could help make that happen. Now is the time to do it. We'd like to thank our top Patreon subscribers, uh, supporters, and being Sammy Roberts, Luke Robson, Joe Papalardo, and Zach and Amber Straley. If you want to hop on our Patreon, you can pay anywhere from a dollar to as much as you like. And it all helps. It all goes directly to keeping the space open, which is used for all sorts of local art and community projects as well, which is <laughs> crazy. Technically, yeah, I guess. technically true. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of people who work here and whatnot, and um, we also use it to buy equipment and keep our subscriptions open. Um, also, all patreons, and I've been saying this before, will be receiving a gift sometime here in the near future. Not all, uh, probably everybody who donates over five dollars. Yeah, they will. And be if you donate over five dollars, you get access to the Patreon post show. Uh, Patreon so that there's over. Post-show. <laughs> over almost a hundred hours of content. Yes, yes. I cannot believe. Oh, Lordy. Yeah, anyway. We've been doing this for a while, so yeah. we're we're about on year. T- we've almost hit a hundred episodes, yeah. which is two years. What? A- I I don't even know what to say. So once you what I, a ride. I've read online. Once you hit year three, and you haven't really got where you want to be, it's about over. So if you want to help us get there, we'd love to have you. If you want more stories about McDonald's and it's mecha- mechanisms. Probably go to another show. It's mic mechanisms. It's mic mechanisms. We're probably done with McDonald's. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> if you want more ice cream eating action, <laughs> the name of this episode has got to be ice cream eating ASMR. Yeah, <laughs> ASMR colon ice, ice cream, cream eating. eating. Yeah. You ice cream ice cream eating with your stepdad. Yes. Uh, yes. All right, y'all have a good one. Peace, uh, and we will see y'all on the Patreon. Bye. Bye. Bye.